Air combat is evolving. Stealth technology that once guaranteed dominance no longer makes aircraft untouchable. Missiles are reaching farther. Air defenses are getting smarter, and drones have matured into real combat platforms. The challenge has become maintaining air superiority without fielding aircraft so expensive that losing even one would be strategically catastrophic. The Air Force has come up with an answer. In October 2025, the Pentagon tested a pairing that collapses two aircraft into a single cockpit. Since the early 2020s, the Pentagon has been laying out a plan for air combat where future fighters won't go in alone. Crew jets are meant to deploy with unmanned wingmen, expanding the formation without adding more pilots. The point is to build combat mass, with drones expected to cost around 20 to 30 million each, making them far cheaper than a stealth fighter, but still capable in a high-end war. They're known as Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs, jet-powered unmanned aircraft designed to fly right alongside platforms like the F-22 and F-35. Depending on the mission, a CCA might trail a fighter and extend its sensors, push ahead to scout, jam enemy radar, carry extra missiles, act as a decoy, or take the riskiest moves so the crewed jet doesn't have to. The plan is to let a single pilot command several CCAs at once, forming a small mixed team where autonomy handles routine flying while the pilot directs the overall flight. This push is driven by practical limits. A Pacific war would stretch forces across huge distances, burn through aircraft fast, and put non-stop pressure on keeping enough jets in the air. The U.S. can't scale pilot training fast enough to replace major losses, and it can't afford to trade $150 million fighters in repeated attrition battles. Unmanned wingmen are a way to add aircraft and firepower without adding pilots, and to take risk off the most valuable jets first. Meanwhile, China is moving in the same direction, developing its own Fighter Plus drone teams. Both countries are racing toward the same model of mixed formations, in which a single pilot leads several aircraft. Washington just proved the concept. On October 21st, 2025, over Nevada, the Air Force, working with Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, General Atomics, and L-3 Harris, launched an F-22 Raptor from Niels while an MQ-20 Avenger lifted off separately into the same test airspace. Once inside the Nevada Test and Training Range, the Raptor pilot used a new open architecture control interface in the cockpit, a tablet-like pilot vehicle interface tied into the F-22's mission system and designed as a flexible plug-and-play tool for current and future aircraft. Using the PVI, the pilot sent real-time commands to the Avenger and steered it through a set mission while both aircraft were airborne. The big moment came when control moved from the ground to the cockpit mid-flight, showing that an F-22 pilot can direct an unmanned jet in real time. The two aircraft remain linked via secure L-3 Harris communications, maintaining continuous end-to-end -end contact throughout the sortie. Just as important, the companies emphasized that the architecture was non-proprietary and government-owned, part of a broader move toward open systems, so future drones can plug into the network without locking the Air Force into a single vendor. Skunk Works Vice President O.J. Sanchez said the event, quote, represents Skunk Works driving a breakthrough in air combat capability, where single-seat aircraft command and control drones with simple and intuitive interfaces in the cockpit. More broadly, the test offered a concrete glimpse of where U.S. air combat is headed under NGAD and the CCA effort. Stealth fighters acting as airborne commanders, with unmanned wingmen adding sensors, weapons, and survivability in the most contested airspace. It was still an early step, focusing on just one pilot, one drone, and one mission profile, but it proved the concept works in real flight. Industry partners say follow-on demos are already being planned, including multi-drone control, higher autonomy, and teaming with other fifth-generation platforms. With cockpit control proven, the key change is that the entire formation can adapt in real time under a single commander. Instead of calling in separate assets on separate timelines, the team can reassign tasks on the fly. An unmanned jet sent wide to probe can be redirected moments later to screen a retreat, confirm a contact, or shift into a new position for a shot. The fight becomes something the pilot can shape as it unfolds, not something managed in pieces. It also changes deception. Unmanned aircraft give commanders more ways to scramble an enemy's view of the battle, forcing radars to light up, pulling defenses out of position, or baiting missiles toward targets that don't matter. And it means faster choices under pressure. 
A single pilot, managing a small set of aircraft, can take a situation that would overwhelm one cockpit and spread it across a formation, letting machines handle the forward pressure while the human focuses on the choices that will impact battlefield outcomes. Less than a month after Nevada, the People's Liberation Army Air Force put out its own public display within a promotional video. On November 11, 2025, to mark the service's 76th anniversary, Beijing posted a short microfilm titled Far Reaching Dreams on its official social media accounts. The film shows a GJ-11 stealth attack drone taxiing from a hangar, lifting off and joining formation with China's top fighters. In the air, the GJ-11, labeled Xuanlong-8, leads a three-ship package. A J-20 stealth fighter holds position behind it, while a J-16D electronic warfare jet flies nearby in support. The staging is meant to highlight the fact that the unmanned aircraft pushes out front, the stealth fighter follows, and the jammer shields the team. This is the first time China has publicly shown in-air manned-unmanned teaming with its frontline stealth fleet. Analysts have seen hints before, including a 2022 CCTV animation depicting a J-20 controlling multiple stealth drones. The only difference was that this time, the hardware was flying. Officially, the PLA hasn't said when the flight was actually recorded. However, the footage confirms that China is working on genuine coordination between crewed fighters and stealth drones, likely via shared data links. Chinese military commentators say the GJ-11 can extend the J-20's reach into higher-risk airspace and add firepower without requiring another pilot. The drone itself has been visible since at least 2019, but this clip is a new signal about how it's meant to be used as a loyal wingman-style partner to man stealth jets. At the same time, the PLA isn't claiming a finished capability. The video doesn't define what collaboration means, and even Chinese analysts caution that this could still be a development or training phase, rather than a combat-ready system. And yet, Beijing chose to show it anyway, in what must have been an effort to make clear that the US isn't the only force building Fighter Plus drone teams, and that China intends to compete in the same future air war. China's advantage lies in its scale and speed. They can design aircraft quickly, test them aggressively, and scale production without the long budget fights, oversight layers, or regulatory drag that slow the US. When the Chinese system decides that a capability matters, it can turn it into hardware in large numbers before Washington has even finished debating the next phase. That same setup also lets China push autonomy hard, with fewer public limits on how quickly AI is trained and fielded. The concern, therefore, is what China can build once it commits to doing it for real. America's advantages cut in a different direction. The US has decades of combat aviation experience, shaping how aircraft are designed, how pilots are trained, and how tactics evolve under real war pressure. It also leads in stealth operations and in tying complex systems into a single fighting network. On the hardware side, Enduril's YFQ-44A Fury and General Atomic's YFQ-42A are now the first official CCA prototypes, and the Air Force plans to buy roughly a thousand uncrewed wingmen over time. In practical terms, China may be able to field mass first, but the US is trying to field smarter, more modular teams that can keep improving after they arrive. What matters isn't who runs the first headline demo, it's who reaches the point where loyal wingmen can become a standard part of frontline combat formations. Whichever country fields manned-unmanned air combat at scale won't just win the next air battle, it will shape control of the skies for decades as it generates more coordinated human-machine formations and replaces losses faster than the other side can. The October F-22 Avenger flight is the first concrete bridge over China's speed and scale advantage, proof that US fighters can command uncrewed partners in real time, and a signal that this race won't be decided by manufacturing alone.